is uh, Srinandan Kazi, Sri, is somewhere and is going to introduce to us the, 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 the platform, the website we are developing at the moment. This is the guy here. Hello, Sri. Hi, Didi, how are you? I'm, I'm going beautifully well, you have no idea. Are you ready to, uh, to make this presentation? Yes, I am. And, um, you know, I, I am far away. I'm actually traveling in Asia at the moment. And so appreciate the opportunity to connect remotely. And uh, uh, Benjamin asked that I introduce myself by video first. I don't know how glamorous it is or not. It's beautiful. Um, but <laughs> uh, and I'm going to just uh, say a few words and then I'm going to switch over to my presentation. OK, so, I, would just, uh, I would just remind you that you don't have two hours, OK? You have, be um, no, take 10 minutes, and if you uh, make it 11, that will be okay. Uh, okay, sounds like a deal. Okay, go ahead. Um, so quick background, um, so you can appreciate how I fit into the discussion today. Um, I am natively neither a sports industry or uh, a sustainability professional. Um, I'm, however, an industry, uh, information industry professional who's worked on membership initiatives around uh, uh, news and information gathering and distribution. And um, you know, have been working on uh, a data science uh, platform for you know groups to come together to tackle some complex challenges. So a couple of years ago, a few of us uh, scientists, engineers types, started this work, and um, uh, our goal was to find a way to enable collaboration around challenges that require possibly uh, an extended period of time for the groups to work together. And that, that may involve uh, some amount of uh, behavioral intervention, if you will. Um, and so uh, Alan and I got connected um, you know, while I was in the middle of the work. And today we have that platform ready and some of the work uh, that I've started to help uh, Sansi on sort of emanates from that. So with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna actually shift to uh, my presentation that is the presentation itself. So give me a second while I do that. Um, I know there is a button here, uh, share my screen. So I'm going to shift to shift to my screen here. Should I sing? So I'm going to shift to, OK, do you see the screen share? Uh, not yet. It's coming. Yes, beautiful. OK, terrific. And um, the way Google Hangout works, uh, I can share the screen with a little nav bar on the side. So just bear with me. Um, it is uh, the work of um, a, a number of people, but basically it is an idea of uh, enabling uh, what we refer to as strategic digital services for sport and sustainability. Uh, keep this image in mind that you're seeing on this uh, cover page because that'll be uh, something I'll refer to a little later. So what we have done is, um, with Sansi, we've you know, basically volunteered um, some of our time and effort uh, a basic site to start with, but also to share with them um, you know, some possible ways in which Sansi would be able to serve its members and stakeholders to enable some in new types of data and other informational collaboration. And that's basically um, you know, what I, I'm gonna share here today, starting with the website. So uh, what we hope to do, what was the objective? The objective was we would end up with something that was a visually interactive platform. It would be a mobile platform and also would allow uh, various stakeholders to provide professional services through it. So there's a degree of engagement that is, um, you know, uh, across Sansi membership and sort of just, uh, you know, from Sansi outwards. And the idea really is, you know, is to enable folks to inspire, uh, mobilize efforts that was referred to earlier today, and most important, to coordinate um, you know, sustainability initiatives where there are some outcome metrics and there are some campaigns uh, to achieve those metrics. So we broke these uh, things into four parts. Um, you know, these are logical parts in some, ma in some measure. Uh, some are very um, straightforward administrative things. I have to have a basic setup with you get the domain, the email account, some things of that nature. Then there are certain things that have to do with uh, membership. And then the richness and texture could, you know, sort of go from there where you engage the fans on the one side and possibly extend across the supply chain. Of course, Sansi makes the decisions on, you know, what parts to use and activate and so on. But the idea really is 
to provide a richness of these sort of possibilities. I've highlighted a few points in purple, if you can tell the colors, and one example is social media. And, and I'm calling you know, uh, and some of these things like knowledge artifacts, I'm calling these out because these are things that are beyond the website, beyond uh, what Sansi itself could produce, and yet uh, by with social media engaging our fans um, it, with the knowledge artifacts, each of you have fabulous reports and tools and things of that nature that you produce. Being able to uh, avail of them where they are used across the membership in new collaborative ways could actually bring new power to this uh, group. And so that's the kind of capability that you know we were focused on. And then finally, I'm going to touch today on an example of the kind of initiative that's possible through the uh, Sansi website powered by the work we do, which is um, in a campaign engagements with fans focused around sustainability. So far, what we've done is to um, set up the corporate site, uh, I mean, corporate part. Uh, we've enabled some basic capabilities around the membership. Uh, there is a website. Um, you know, it was put together without a lot of design uh, necessarily, you know, thought through. But the idea again was let's start. Let's uh, keep in mind that, you know, again, I'll emphasize visual and I'll come back to that. And then let's iterate quickly so that we can keep taking steps rather than try to conceive all possible ways of doing things and then launching it. And so if you look forward, you know, uh, Sensi will be in a position to start to enroll members, to be able to, you know, interact with donors and other partners and sponsors and so on, enroll into fan engagement uh, with all of your inputs, even as early as later in the year. Of course, the timing on these things is completely up to Sensi. Now, I mentioned that we have, um, you know, set up a basic website. Um, so on the website, you will see uh, the typical about us events, uh, a knowledge centerpiece. These are starting points. They're by no means, um, you know, final. Uh, that's because there's a lot of information that we can pull together and, and put together in one place. And in fact, uh, you know, just serving as that sense, could be a very good destination um, hub. And with a membership, there will be a secure place on the website that people can log in and be able to interact as well. And um, there is also a web blog and webinar capability and so on. But I want to touch on this uh, part here that is fan campaigns. Um, it's actually something that you know we um, set up, but it's not live on the site at the moment. But I'm going to use an example of some work done by the NBA recently, which Elm and Sensi were part of, uh, which is um, you know unique um, digital engagement of video animation that they produced with their you know some of their past star players to rally fans around um, energy uh, conservation. And so they had six themes or memes, uh, and every day they send out a cue if you were to text to a certain number, and they'll give you daily tips on you know, what to do about saving energy. So uh, the play here and the opportunity for Sansi, and this is just sort of an illustrative example, is to be able to take that, those, um, you know, the work done by the NBA, for example, already, and to turn that into uh, uh, more of a game which actually can have a deeper sense of, you know, fan um, a recall, uh, potential action that actually ties into uh, points and things of that nature that can drive uh, interaction with both messaging, but also, as an example, into, um, uh, you know, game type engagement. So this is a visual that you're seeing that is actually put together uh, by stakeholders who are interested in sustainability. I mentioned to Alan and some of the founding Sansi members, students who were very interested in actually being able to provide visuals that actually convey sustainability um, ideas and principles and a way of engaging that, which may not be scientific, but creates con in a conversation and awareness, a uh, real significant opportunity. And what the platform uh, can do with Sansi is to actually put these up on the Sansi website and allow fans to, for example, based on the event, based on the type of energy uh, conservation or sustainability area to be able to interact with it and create, um, you know, who can identify the ways in which energy is being wasted or uh, if it's food and food and so on and so forth. A couple of important points that I've put together on the right side here, and that is um, this is a, a picture of a, a potential living room, if you will, or a game room in uh, a Western country. In parts of the world, you know, uh, they don't have a household like that. 
So what is the visual story that uh, can be told about energy sustainable, or in this case energy, but more generally sustainability? So cultural adoption is something that can be done. So the underlying information and content doesn't have to change, the visual can change. So this is a way also to transcend some of the language barriers that you know the hard science of sustainability might run into. So these are the kinds of things that you know become possible uh, for SANSI to actually take leadership on, having a library of visuals, a library of you know uh, interactive uh, themes and things of that nature. And there are ideas that go beyond that. But today, you know, I just wanted to touch on that part of it, which is visual and cultural suitability without language barriers. But the idea of being able to bring brands into these sort of engagements and bring some financial support for SANSI uh, then becomes a real possibility. Uh, I'll finish with just, uh, I focused on energy here. Uh, DDR has given me 10 minutes, which I'm coming up on. So I will finish with simply saying that there is a, a, a data science and a collaboration uh, platform capability here at SANSI's disposal, which uh, can allow for the development of a global support and sustainability network where stakeholders can connect with each other and do things. Um, and it could cover a variety of topics uh, in the sustainability world that touches not just the venues, not just the um, you know organizing um, organizations, but also the fans and other stakeholders. So that's what I wanted to share today, and uh, happy to answer any questions. And Didi, I hope I kept to your uh, uh, time limit. Thank you so much, Sri. Uh, what you have to learn is that uh, there will be no question or comments on your presentation. Uh, anybody having a, a comment or a question will either directly uh, discuss with three or we'll go through the communication committee we are going to create in a few minutes in order to implement and uh, to, to move forward as soon as possible because we need this communication committee to, to move ahead very quickly. Are you okay with this, Ri? Fabulous, no, absolutely, you're in command. Okay, and last point, uh, which nobody knows probably, is that Sri has been with us since nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, he has been following all the debates via our live stream. So thank you so much for, uh, for having been uh, with us the entire day. Thanks. Thank you very much. Bye bye. So now we need a technical help. Uh, bon Benjamin, if you can, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are getting to the uh, last part of this uh, uh, General Assembly today. I'm trying to find my notes. Here, here they are. Okay, so ba back to, okay. And I, this one is, that's okay, like this? Okay, beautiful. Okay. Is that that? <laughs> Last stretch, that's in the, it's an important one. So um, on the agenda today, we still have the, the couple, a couple of things to do, minor things to do, and here they are, my notes. So we are going to, uh, to present and to support, hopefully, uh, Sensi statutes, okay? So Van Rees is going to be asked to come and join us in order to, in, in one minute, uh, Van. Uh, then there will be a number of resolutions that will be presented to you. And remember what is the rule today? You're supposed to say it's beautiful, we approve it, okay? Uh, and then uh, Vincent, will uh, come back to the stage and tell us about the uh, Sensi's headquarters uh, location. And then we'll have uh, Neil talking about the code of conduct, uh, the uh, code of ethics, sorry. And then we will have the election process, let's put it that way. And the number of resolutions I'm going to present to you afterwards. Oh no, it's, it's done already, so I'm getting tired. So Van, are you ready now? Okay. So let's be serious on this one. We are not going to spend two hours on talking about the statutes, okay? He's going to explain to you that they are already there. We, we request the support from this General Assembly to, to simply as, a, as an approval to move ahead with this. Go ahead. Uh, when we started out, we first considered where to put the company, where we put the organization, and uh, it was decided to put it in Switzerland as that is the uh, most neutral and efficient place to put a organization such as ourselves. Then uh, the normal rule would have been that we'd have created a Swiss foundation. 
But that is not what we chose to do. A Swiss foundation, the board of directors runs it. We decided to be an association. So instead of having a pinnacle to uh, going up in power, we would have a vertical, uh, a horizontal system whereby the members would have authority over us. The statutes provide the members will elect a board, the board will approve, uh, will appoint officers and committees, and the, we are committed to a program of transparency, we are committed to a program of our ethics that form part of our, our structure, and I, that is what I wish to tell you about. So anyway, all of you have had the time to, uh, to read the documents which were sent to you, or we, you had a Google Drive uh, link, so you could read the statutes. Basically, we have not invented things. Uh, it comes from the Swiss law. If you want to, uh, to have a re registration in Swiss, you have to follow the, the Swiss law. So we have gone through this originally, and then we slightly amended the original uh, statutes in order to make them workable for the General Assembly today. So. I would like to try something with you right now. Uh, can we agree on supporting unanimously these statutes? Okay, let's do it again, because I didn't hear really well. Okay, can we agree on approving unanimously these statutes? Yes. Yes. Okay, that will be the last one, okay? Do we agree on supporting these statutes? Yes. Okay, great, I love it, beautiful. Next point on the agenda. <sighs> Sensi headquarters, Vincent? Yeah, yeah. No, it's headquarters at all. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Great, so you now all know that we have formally made a decision, that was already six or so months ago, to establish ourselves in Switzerland, right? In the background, a bit of hesitation, a bit of thinking about other options which we had. We considered uh, Brussels, Belgium, we considered London, we considered Paris for a little while, eventually, by large consensus, agreed that Switzerland was the right place to be. It's international, it is neutral, it is functional, it is uh, fiscally very appropriate and very advantageous as well. Uh, it is a very NGO-friendly environment. So we've, is, we've decided for Switzerland, uh, as part of the, the, of the things we, which we have to do in order to get serious and in order to, 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 to develop the organization. So Switzerland it is, it's decided. Uh, then we had to uh, make a choice, of course, to where in Switzerland, and there were, I suppose, two obvious uh, locations to consider. Uh, one was Lausanne the Olympic capital, uh, which uh, hosts about 60 plus uh, international sports organizations. And the other one was Geneva, uh, wh which hosts effectively most of the uh, Switzerland-based NGOs or international organizations. The UN system, of course, is, is based in Geneva, or a big part of it anyway. So, so we, um, we, after a, a long deliberation and long discussion, we've decided to go for Geneva uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, primarily because, first of all, the, the city of Geneva and the Canton of Geneva have been extremely welcoming uh, and is offering us very good, uh, good conditions to, 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 be, to be there. So, so Geneva it is, um, extremely convenient and well located. Uh, Geneva has about 120 plus NGOs based around, many of which are operating in the field of environment and sustainable development. So Geneva it is. Um, that's good, thank you. A bit more precisely then, uh, part of, the, um, of what the, uh, the city of Geneva is doing for us is to helping us find office space. Um, and the office space which we have found to be suitable for us is the International Environment House, Maison Internationale de l'Environnement. Um, which effectively gathers under a, a single, there's actually two buildings, but a very large number of United Nations branches, uh, but also a large number of NGOs, and I'll list a few of those a bit later. Um, so, uh, 
and of course the, the aim of this particular place and this particular building is to really encourage synergies and partnership between all these various actors that are based there. So a very suitable location, I'm sure you will agree. This is what it looks like. It's about five minutes bus ride or a tramway ride from the, from the airport. Uh, it is part of the what they call the Geneva Environment Network, uh, which is again coordinated by UNEP. UNEP uh, has an operation in uh, not just in Kenya, of course, but in, in 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 Geneva in this case. So that network and the synergy between the various branches or NGOs that are based in this building is coordinated by UNEP. Uh, as I said, it's accessible, it's very well serviced, and we have uh, a number of very relevant neighbors, of course, that we can. Uh, you know, develop synergies with UNEP, UNDP, uh, the UN Environment Management Group as a whole, the International Institute for Sustainable Development, the Gold Standard Foundation, and so on, and so on, and so on. About uh, 80 organizations are based in these two buildings. So, and they all, in one way or another, operate in the field of environment. So, that is the entrance. The, that said, we, um, Look, Geneva is, of course, a suitable location because it is actually very close to Lausanne itself, right? We had to make a choice. Uh, it will be Geneva, but we are only in a 60-kilometer radius or distance from Lausanne, where, again, you have about 60 international sports organizations based. Everyone who goes to Lausanne flies through, who drives through Geneva, so it's a very suitable place, but we're in a very close distance from, obviously, the Olympic capital of Lausanne, from the Maison du Sport International, which hosts 50 or so international sport federations. Of course, it is the home of the International Olympic Committee. Uh, it will host the uh, Youth Olympic Games in 2020. So there's a number of them. These are our neighbors in very close distance. And so, and so that's that. So that's a decision made. We hope you will uh, approve that. We hope you will uh, uh, approve the, the, the choice and the selection that was made. Um, a quick point to put on your uh, on your agenda before we move to the next agenda point. If you don't mind, yes, yep. We'd like you to um, to save the date for uh, of October the fifth of twenty seventeen for uh, for an event which we will uh, organize for our stakeholders. Right now, there's a, the, the Swiss mission to the United Nations uh, is putting together an event um, which aims to bring together all the Switzerland-based international sport federations with the UN branches that are based in Geneva, primarily focused on, on the implementation of the, um, of the sustainable development goals. Uh, and what we will aim to do is to, one, participate in the seminar, so we can talk about our own initiative. Uh, we'll organize a seminar around it on a subject that is yet to be determined. And we will possibly host a press conference as well to effectively to, to launch our, our existence in Switzerland. So we will send you more detail, but if you, f if you could, for the, for the time being, um, save that date, that would be much appreciated. Switzerland, Geneva, Homo Sensian will have an office in uh, operational in just a few months. Yes? Thank you, Thank you very much. As uh, you all know already, ethics will be part of our uh, central, our core focus uh, in the coming decades and millennium. And uh, our president, current president, uh, uh, as he likes to call him ad interim president, uh, is going to talk to you about this code of, eth uh, code of ethics and, of course, the ethics committee that goes with it. How did I manage to get Didier to come? How did I manage to get some of you to come to this? Why is because it was putting very strong messages out there that from the very genesis of fantasy we put in, as we say in French, des garde fous. Why is because if we talk about sustainability, it's not just about green movement. It's about showing a role model, a role model about ethics. So this is how I got into sustainability. Um, as some of you may remember, Sion, 2002 and 2006, I was there every time in, in the valley when we lost, and that's where I decided to campaign for ethics through sport, change the system from within, and around it you have industries. I think the border from black to white is always gray, but at least we're showing a message internally that we want to foster stewardship, integrity, inclusivity, and transparency. 
a proof we're broadcasted live is about transparency. We shared all the documents for you to consult. This is a big step as well. As said, you know, we all have an interest for being here. We understand pragmatically that there will be outcomes and we cannot work for free forever. Uh, however, what we want to define is transparency. So we share this information on how, where we work and for which reason, being always sustainability at the core front. We wanna have a positive working spirit. It's very difficult to work from different time zones, with different cultures, with different ways of working. That's maybe how, as a Swiss, I try to, to juggle be between all these different cultural backgrounds and stay calm as well because we have to move together. And we could spend hours debating on the definition of sustainability. This will not save the planet. The actions will save the planet. Um, so these are the, the core principles. I think we need to respect as well the sensi image, of course. You know, we, we need to take the plane um, and sometimes our professional impact has a higher impact than our personal impact because what we will do through our work will uh, have positive impact. And I think we still need to understand that the image of Sensi, the image of Sensi members will be judged as well to the outside. And it's always easy to have the critical eye. You know, I take holidays, I fly, of course. And people will always find the thing to hurt you where they know it will hurt you. Um, however, I think we still have to respect that we should be role models. <coughs> Sanctioning being a harsh word, but I think we need to also say that we delimit some, you know, boundaries on who we, we accept based upon criteria that the membership and the ethics committee bring to the table, but we also need to be inclusive because UEFA didn't change because suddenly all the top management wanted to change, but there was people in the system that wanted to from bottom up or to change things. So you need to take the reforms from inside and also, but you need to put boundaries on who you accept fossil fuel, fossil industry, other tobacco industry. This is all to discuss, but I think it's worth putting it from the very start. But also, who do you sanction in case there's a breach to the code of ethics? Going even further, I've asked as well, as a proposal, Alex C worked with me to have an ethical committee. Why? Because I want somebody some one day to potentially kick me out because I would have breached some of the ethical code of conduct. It's a fine middle between being strict, but also being conscious that we're always navigating into a gray zone. There is no black or white, but at least it's showing a very strong image from the very start. And I think this will show credibility to the outside world and at least if we do breach, we will have tools to take actions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. So, we are almost there. Now comes uh, another important point in the day, which is the resolutions. I'm going to read to you a number of, of sentences, key sentences, which reflect what we have been doing in the past months, weeks, days, and including today. And we are going to ask Congress to support uh, the resolution as it will stand. Finding the right slide. Okay, so I'm going to read it loud. Resolution number one, which has to deal with past activities. Be it resolved that, okay, so uh, we're going to avoid that question coming out. Be it resolved that is the legal expression that starts any resolution, okay? You will find it nine times, so. Uh, be it resolved that Congress approve the efforts made by census founding directors and organizing committee in creating Sport and Sustainability International. 
the wording is very simple. Uh, should you not support this one, you would not be in the room today. So may I anyway ask Congress approval, unanimous support for this first resolution? Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going, I want that, I want that. Thank you. So let's move to the second one. We just talked about ethics. Be it resolved that ethics, transparency, integrity, stewardship and inclusivity be senses driving principles. Can we agree on this easy one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> you can, you can, yeah, 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 you can do it. <laughs> Physical exercise is always important. Resolution number three. It's about the creation of committees. So far we had work groups, okay? So we are moving from work groups to official committees. So the resolution reads as follows. Be it resolved that the following committees be created in order to best implement census vision and missions. Administration committee, communication committee, ethics committee, membership committee, program development committee, technical and scientific committee. Can we receive unanimous support from the General Assembly? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> keep going, keep going. Resolution number four. We are working on future with this one. Be it resolved that Congress empower the Board of Directors to create further committees and or commissions and or subcommittees and or subcommissions at any time if circumstances justify it. Just one word of explanation. Today we have technical and scientific committee. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a technical committee and a scientific that will be subcommittees. And maybe inside the subcommittees we'll have and so on, okay? So by supporting this resolution, you just allow us to move forward with the implementation program we have in mind. Can we get unanimous support from the Congress on this one? Yes! <laughs> Resolution number five. Work in committees commission. Be it resolved that Congress empower the board of directors to coordinate the appointments, nominations, and work in all current and future committees and commissions. We have to start somewhere. We are in the starting process where there will be a board of directors officially nominated today, and from that, we will start to work, meaning among the people who will be asking for it, we'll nominate a president or a chair for that committee, and the work will start. So we are just asking us to empower us to do so. May we receive the support of Congress on this one? <laughs> Resolution number six. It's about website creation and development. I should have, uh, I should need to rewrite the title. It's uh, communication tools, in fact, more than the website, okay? So the text as it was changed is as follows. Be it resolved that Congress approve the launch and future development of the website www.sensi.org and any other communication tools created to share information generate ideas and accelerate awareness and concrete action in a domain of sport and sustainability. Can we agree on this one too? <laughs> Resolution number seven, which has been already passed, but uh, I wanted to write it the, the proper way. About the statutes, be it resolved that Congress approve the revised statutes presented which are the modified updated version of the original set of statutes transmitted to the Swiss authorities when creating Sports and Sustainability International. Can we have uh, unanimous support on this one too? Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Resolution number eight. That was the original text, but with your beautiful work today, we came up with uh, an amendment to the original resolution. And I'm going to read it, okay? So it's not there, it's the one I'm going to read. It's a quite a complicated one, but it's going to work. Be it resolved that Congress empower the Board of Directors and the Membership Committee to initiate 
official membership registration on the basis of the table presented to the General Assembly. That's the first part. Can we support this one? Yes. yes. Beautiful. <laughs> so we have another resolution that goes with it. And this other resolution goes as follows. Be it further resolved that members registered between May 23, which is today, and December 31st of 2017 be identified as census founding members. Can we get unanimous support on this one too? Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> and uh, just for the record, uh, the, uh, the founding member registration will cease on December 31st, uh, 2017, because then we will be working on the 2018 scale, which we still have to work out, but we are talking about founding members, okay? Just for your information. And now, we end up with resolution number nine. Be it resolved that Congress refer to the Board of Directors to work together and implement census first annual budget based on conservative figures and stakeholders membership further input. So as you could understand during the day, there were very relevant information coming from the floor saying that the business model, etc. So we need to refine everything and come up with a first annual budget. But we want you to empower us to do so. So this is the purpose uh, behind this resolution. Can we get unanimous support from the, the General Assembly about this? Yes. Thank you. So these were the nine resolutions that we wanted to put uh, together for you today, which are very important because as you understood it, now we can work even more efficiently than before this General Assembly because we have the support of this inaugural Congress General Assembly. Okay, beautiful. So once again, round of applause, it's beautiful. <laughs> and now the last part of Congress today of the General Assembly which is the election of a board of directors, okay? So, as I said at the beginning of the day, we had to face a quite strange situation, which is that we have no members, okay? So everybody in the room uh, could come in and say, it's beautiful, let's go, or well, I'm not happy, or I have this question, this comment, and so on. As far as the board of directors is, 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 is concerned, in the last two years, a number of people have been working to launch the thing, to put it together. And instead of going through a classical election where 60 days ahead or 90 days ahead, there are candidates and an end. We, we, we are coming with a different approach for just this inaugural Congress, which is we are going to propose to you what people in North America call a slate. I don't know if it's a proper word, but I remember that word, mean, meaning a, less, a list of people a list of people that we are going to introduce to you. You know many of them already because you have seen them today, either presenting something or during your discussions. And we are going to present these people in order that you know who are the guys who are going to be your representative in the years to come. So here uh, probably I need somebody to help or do I just press? Should I try? No, it's not this one. So somebody has to help me. So the statutes say that we should have 50 members, okay, in a board of directors. So we worked on the list of 15 people. And uh, we remember very well what was said in, uh, in the meeting in Munich. There was a reference to the white man. Because in Munich, the people who had been working so far, look, he's white and he's a man. Yeah, look at... Alan is white and is a man, look at Fabian, and so on, okay? So it was a, a clear criticism. We had to start somewhere, okay? <laughs> but now we have come to the next stage, and the next stage is inclusivity, representativity, and so on. So the first thing we did was to include women, not because we needed a quota or a quorum, not at all, because we identified, and we already identified them in Munich. That was funny, Munich, just one sentence. In a room in Munich, the most active, aggressive people were women. The men were like this, yeah, okay, no, I'm not happy. And the girls, <laughs> beautiful, let's use them. 
So we are going to present a list of people, aggressive ladies among them, and that will be the composition of what we propose to you to be the incoming board of directors for the years to come. Just for the record, in the statutes, it is said that there should be one at least one third woman in the board, and we are reaching 50-50 today, okay? Uh, without microphone, it doesn't work. You need a microphone. Somebody has to give him a microphone because it's people will not he hear him. Oh, here they are, here they are. Go ahead. I'm not sure this one works. This work? One of these? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Take this one, take this. No, no, uh, Alan. Anyone? Okay, go ahead. The technique is ready. Question to Radford. Um, because of translation um, issues, when Didier says aggressive women, um, <laughs> he, does, he does not mean that in the way uh, native <laughs> English speakers might assume. Sorry, I'm French. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we are going to go through this list. Are you ready? Okay, if you want to. Or maybe I do it with uh, for the president and you move forward. So I don't know if it's really readable, but uh, I will do it for the president and then he will move forward with the, the rest. The first one to be on his board would be, if Congress approves it, uh, Neil Beecroft on my left from Switzerland, since he founding director and president, former sustainability manager of UEFA. That's point number one, no, person number one. Person called uh, Vincent. We will go quickly through the, the various presentations so you didn't know a bit more what Vincent does on the side of rugby and what he did before. We also have a former founding director, uh, Gerrit Hendricks, who's been nominated, who has to also discuss internally uh, how this nomination can be go further. However, as you will see on the Knowledge Center, we are bringing all the knowledge from AISTS to share with you as a membership a proposal. Um, Alan, for those of you who have not seen him uh, today or heard him speak, uh, also what is great is he brings the experience of creating the Green Sports Alliance. And I think you know this can reassure us a bit on how we start from scratch to what he has done in North America. Uh, we have Fabian uh, also. Are you? Um, I'll go through the slides after. Um, we have uh, DJ, um, as said, uh, you know, we brought him since he was challenging <coughs> us. Uh, for those who missed this very interesting presentation this morning uh, with Julia uh, Palais. Um, Leonie Shrev, managing director at ING, interesting for us because she is former athletes at a very high level and also comes from the financial sector right now. So having different perspectives. I was very lucky during Euro to work with somebody who w does an amazing job behind the scene, uh, a lady called Margot Chave, uh, a true champion, a world expert, but a very modest person. I think she can bring a lot uh, to the board. And Cecile Turner, unfortunately, cannot be with us today. She's following us YouTube, so behave. Uh, she brings all her sailing knowledge a sport that has direct touch with impact of climate change. I think it's also interesting to, to see a sport like skiing or others that has experience with how climate change is influencing the sport discipline itself. Uh, Julia Justo, um, mix of Spanish and English, Spanglish. Yes, uh, coming all the way from Peru to be with us giving us access as well to different continents, different ways of seeing sustainability and different challenges. For us, it's super stimulating, hopefully as direct involvement of Sansi in some of the biggest events uh, to come. Susie uh, Thompson with, was with us yesterday. She was one of the key player in Munich challenging us. So we're like, okay, come and help us, um, we would love your help. Uh, Susie was working as well in sailing and other activities through sustainability. Uh, you have all seen what the BBC is doing um, in production. I think we need to have a strong expertise on that field in sports, in TV, which is playing a key role, but as well how 
they engage on sustainability, but also as well how they could pressure big federations. And I was at UEFA willing that one day the broadcasters would come and say, so what are you guys doing, you know? Uh, I would love to have this and potentially maybe we can discuss on how Paula can bring her expertise uh, on the role that uh, BBC or big, um, big broadcasters can play in the field of sports and sustainability. Alexi, for those who have seen his presentation, was at the genesis of the thoughts of creating this movement, um, brings his, all his um, COP21 carbon uh, knowledge offsets uh, the event itself. And finally, uh, maybe Alan, you want to say a few words on Stephen. Stephen Rockefeller comes from a, a great uh, a conservation family, one of the greatest environmental families in the history of the United States. Uh, many of our national parks are a result of his family's contributions. His family uh, is uh, spectacularly uh, supportive of environmental uh, initiatives. Uh, Stephen took, uh, is a friend of mine uh, who I deal with on uh, sustainability issues in New York. Uh, he took a great interest in what we were doing uh, in terms of uh, merging sport and sustainability. Um, he's been a great advisor to me strategically, and he has a great network uh, of colleagues and friends and family members who uh, he thinks would be uh, helpful in supporting our work. Um, and um, he's a great guy, and uh, I uh, personally strongly endorse uh, having him on the board. Uh, none of our work would be possible without special advisors, and hopefully the list will evolve as we will develop in the months to come. Please join them in um, providing us valuable help. Uh, Von Kirk, why is Von Kirk's role there important is because I was referring before to the Ethics Committee, which should remain independent, and we should have as well somebody who is close to the board but uh, is also a potentially capable of advising or I would sanctioning board members for potential breach of the code of conduct. And I think we are very happy to have Van with his ex past experience helping us to keep uh, track in the right way. Mael, uh, you know, we were talking about public authorities, what Mael has presented this morning. Um, I think can definitely advise us to develop Sansi further and engaging how he did with his sports entities in France uh, commitment uh, and com con concrete KPIs. I think that's uh, super interesting. Pierre Luigi, uh, we spent long hours discussing post Munich, so we thought come closer to us so then you take ownership and how we develop because you're there from the very start and Pierre Luigi has brought a lot of input uh, from the genesis and we thought it was fantastic to have him close to us to guide us. And Vivian, as, as you have seen uh, yesterday with all the work she's doing as being a leader in the field, fantastic to also have her, her advising. So are you just a list of guys talking about board issues Potentially, yes, but behind this, you see past experience in every sector. And um, that's why we chose the people to help us move Sansi forward, whether it's from mega events operations background, whether it's on ISO 2012-1 certification, <laughs> carbon calculations, life cycle assessment, tools, existing tools, extens extensive sports network, innovation, formerly E, Echo Games, direct contact with natural elements, communication and production, the political, the legal field, the sports background. We believe that we have tried to cover as much as possible field. We do believe as well we need to open further expertise, but I think we have a strong foundation to bring Sansi in the right way. So what I'll quickly do right now is, for those you've seen my face, 
Vincent as well, Margot, sorry, for the, she, she's hiding potentially, so now she cannot hide. Um, I won't go into too much details. Please have a look you know, at their CV on LinkedIn. Um, Gertrude cannot be here today. Alan, Julia, bienvenido. Uh, yes, he didn't have this frog t-shirt there, but it, it's his second favorite t-shirt. I'm very proud he put a tie to, today, but I, I prefer his t-shirt there. Um, Alexi, Julia, uh, Fabian, Leoni uh, as well, nice to, the list is exhaustive, you know, and Paula as well, welcome. Susie, who cannot be here with us today, and Cecile as well, Stephen, Maëlle with a different haircut, uh, Viviane as well, who, those who saw her today, Van, and Pierluigi again, because we like <laughs> his smile. And thank you very much. I hope that you trust us in how we will develop further Sansi. We will submit again. The next procedure will be voting uh, once we have members. And uh, we will be very happy to have all members being subject to vote in the years to come as Sansi will have memberships and members actually being able to endorse those people. Thank you very much. So you have a list here in front of you, and of course uh, it's not a traditional election. It's going to be by unanimous support or consent or approval, whatever. Uh, is it any possible that every single person in this room approves this list of nominees in order to have officially an incoming executive board or board of directors? For this uh, first ever General Assembly of Sensi, can we have this support? Yeah. Yes! Okay, Anne Cecile. Okay, let. Okay, are you okay with Anne Cecile? <laughs> okay, beautiful. She has more hair. Okay. So the next point is the following: as uh, we said during the day, we have now officially um, uh, we have official committees, but we would like to get from you today. Um, uh, we would like you to get involved. Okay. So we are going to go committee by committee, and very quickly. If somebody is happy to join this committee, first discussions, first work, and so on, we are going to write the names down, okay? So, because we want everyone to see everyone. We don't want it to be done by email or so on, okay? So, uh, I need the list of all the committees. Is it possible to get it? But, okay, let's start with technical and scientific committee, okay? So, who wants to join technical and scientific committee? So we have Alan. So beware, beware is going to raise the hand for everything. So Alan is one. Who else? So you have, sorry, uh, can you pass the, the microphone so that we really hear? <coughs> I didn't hear. So could you do it again with the sound this time? Uh, guys, uh, Monsieur, Monsieur Dame à la technique. Le micro jaune, le micro jaune, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Antoine Gerings de CO2 Logic, from CO2 Logic in Belgium. Okay, next one. Cheminat Denis, Fédération Française. Cheminat Denis of the French Federation of uh, Cycling, next. Who has the microphone, go ahead. Alors, qui a le micro Denis Beauchatet de Cantis. Denis Beauchatet, Cantis. J'écris ça, Cantis. Didier Wouters, Tractable. Didier Wouters, Tractable. Tractable, Didier Wouters, Tractable. Suivant. Next. OK, so, sorry, your first name, can you spell it, please? Sorry. I'm getting tired, I'm sorry. Sorry, N-A-A-Z-I-A. -A okay, N-A-A-Z-I-A, -A okay. Next one. Go ahead, go. 
Mathilde Mignot et Coact. Mathilde Mignot et Coact. Next one. Uh, Julia Justo for scientific and technical. technical. Okay. Justo. Anybody else? Hey, we already have a bunch of serious people here. Beautiful. And of course, the list is not closed. At any time, you can join, okay? But we have to start somewhere. How about uh, membership committee? That's a very serious one, okay? So, I wish names, please. Eileen McManaman, 5T Sports. 5T Sports. Okay, next one. Stéphane Ruot, Amory Sport Organisation. I saw. Next Alexis one. Leroy, all cut. Beautiful, next one. Okay, we have three people so far. Jonathan. Okay, let's write down Jonathan. Yes, yes. Yes, obviously. Jonathan from GEO. Okay, so that would close the membership committee first list. Let's say communication. Oh, sorry, we have another one for membership. Okay, Julia. So we have a problem. You know, we have Julia, we have Julia, we have Julie. Uh, and, the, and the problem is the Skype calls will be a challenge. I can <laughs> tell you, doing that with uh, Alan or other friends, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, communication committee. Go ahead, I need names. Daniele Barbone from Italy. Daniele? Yes, I am. Italy, 12 points. <laughs> Adam Sharetta from... Wow, well, you have to repeat, please. Yes, Adam. Uh, Adam, okay. Adam. Uh, Sharetta. S-Z-R-E. Yeah, yeah, S -Z -E. yeah, I forgot the Z, the Z the other day, so now I know. And uh, you represent? Uh, touchline. Touchline, okay. Next one. Yes. R Rika Rakic. Rika, double I, double K, A. That's right. Yes. You have five passports, so which one? Should we <laughs> Sweden? No, we'll, we'll go for the Finnish one. Finnish? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Finland. Uh, and so on. Next one. Alexandre Mornar. <coughs> Alexandre Mornar, Neige Granite. Protect our winters, POW. Next one. Philippe Koss, sport responsable, général e sport. I'm, I'm sorry, I was distracted. Ici, je suis là, je suis là, ici, là. I'm here, I'm here. Philippe Koss, sport responsable, général. Guillaume Champetier. Champetier, oui, Champetier. Yes, Champetier. Je suis là, I'm here. I uh, represent the Volunteers House, former FET member. Yes, Paula Stringer, BBC Sport. Yeah, it's quite logical <laughs> to have you, Paula. Any Anybody else? Yes? Annalena Buchwalter. Annalena Buchwalter. Very good. I'm training very hard, you know. It's my French name. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, no? Okay, next one. Program development. That's a serious one, program development. Program development. Let's go. Lisa Delpi Narati. You put Narati. N E I. Yeah, I, I, I know how to spell your name, but I can't find you. Where are you? Oh, here you are, okay. Yes, okay. Lisa. Who else? Apparently, I'm already on. But uh, no, no, oh, go ahead. I want to Leonie hear you. Leonie Schreger. Okay. Officially Dutch. Yeah. Officially Dutch. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, we have hands raised here and there, everywhere. Wow, beautiful. Mathilde. Mathilde Mignot. 
Mathilde Mayo, yes. Would you be classified as a Greek person? Okay. I would prefer Greek if you don't mind. We have plenty of Americans already uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one, go ahead. Uh, Eileen, 5T Sports. You can, Eileen. You can put Yeah, Canada. you came from Vancouver, so you need well, to be... Well, uh, kind of dual, but, w but since, you, since you have too many Americans, we'll go Canada. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Okay, next one. Nazia again from Ecosphere Plus. Anybody else? Is it okay to be in uh, more than one committee? Yes, okay. we start like this uh, and we see what happens. All right. Alexandre Mornard. Alexandre, Alexandre Mornard. Yeah, protect our winners. The amazing thing is that so far we had one, two, three, four, five, six, six girls. You needed to be here, you know, to, to balance. Jeremy Mathieu. Uh, ah, Raftar, okay. Jeremy Mathieu. Marc uh, Bultes de la Recyclerie Sportive. Marc. Marc Bultes from uh, Sports Recycling. Uh, sorry, I forgot about me, uh, my name. Okay, so it will be, I will be, I would like to be in this program development thing and also in the technical and scientific committee. Next one. Joseph Escoda. Okay, anybody else? That's a serious committee, this one too. Wow. And we do have, oh. sorry, more? Yes, Antoine, uh, again from Ecology as we can be in two. Yes, 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 yes. Antoine, written down. Okay, we move on with the next one, which will be the last one. You want to be on it? Okay. Program development, Pierluigi Sakeo. Pierluigi. You do want some? Oh, no, okay. How about the administration committee now? <laughs> Okay, administration committee coming from the floor, Vincent. Anybody else? Van, anybody else? Uh, Fabian? Anybody else? It's not as sexy as program development or communication <laughs> administration. <laughs> Nobody else? Okay, we start with these ones, they are not too bad. And ethics committee. Who wants to deal with ethics? You should all raise your hands, you know? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Van, of course, it's logical. Who else? Fabian? Alexis? Who else? Dora Horvath. <laughs> Are you Austrian? No, Hungarian. Ah, Hungarian. Yes. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. H so it's Horvat, H-O-R-V-A-T-H. H -O -R -V -A -T -H. Okay. Exactly. European Chamber. Did we tell you that we had 30 countries in the room today? I think it was said, but I want to repeat it because it's beautiful. Hungary. Who else wants to be part of this ethics committee? Yes, that would be logical. Uh, Neil is the most fervent defender of this approach. Sorry? You, you, you in all committees. Yeah, I, I know that, I know that. But I'm going to write it down anyway, okay? Have we gone through it? God, it's beautiful. So welcome to these uh, new committee members. Uh, what we're going to do, yes, 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 let's applaud. <laughs> so what we are going to do in the coming weeks is to reorganize everything, to identify uh, who could be a chair or co-chair of the committee and start contacting people with what we believe to be our priorities, what should be the strategy, how would, would we implement things. That's the next point, okay? So once again, one thing was to raise your hands today. Another thing is to work tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, of course, every one of you is going to work very hard on that. We, of course, will accept any reason why you would have to stop uh, because that's facts of life. But uh, the more people will help us, the quicker we will be, okay? Beautiful. And uh, we are now concluding this General Assembly and uh, the inaugural Congress of Sensi. 
with the perspectives to come and a closing address. Is that how you do it? Okay. So I think to, to finish on this kind of um, inclusivity and inclusion, I would like maybe some of you to do the closing address at my place uh, to share their feelings. Um, it is an emotional moment doing this committee because w it's the, the birth of what will really take place. And as you have seen with the website and as you have seen with concrete actions we've been doing, we're started working already um, beyond the structure. The perspectives to keep this momentum going, this is why we have already put October in the agenda. If we had put a um, next seminar, next big meeting in one year time, the energy would have gone down. And I think it's a very good idea to keep meeting regularly and exchanging because this is how we advance. And you know, there's been a lot of people saying, well, you know, this structure is heavy and we wanna make it right from the start. We wanna have your input from the start. But as we have all come from the operational sector, once it's done, it's done, and then we go fast. And this is really how we want to proceed further. So I thank everybody. Merci beaucoup de votre participation. Merci de votre collaboration. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your future cooperation. Keep this critical eye. This is how we've progressed until now. And we are really open to all your feedback. As Didier was saying, as long as it's constructive. And you will be included as well to take all the measures, to apply all the measures that you will decide. Take the floor to do the closing address and to share his opinion about the day. If not, we can talk about it around a beer or two or three tonight. And thank you very much. Um, before applauding yourself, I would like to open the floor one last time. If not, let's debrief around a beer and I think that's maybe where the next ideas will generate. Thank you very much. <laughs> and again, I would then wanted to thank everybody for having made today possible. Thank you. So just a couple of information to end it. Uh, Neil doesn't know where the restaurant is and what kind of food it is and so on, so he went ahead with beer because it's supposed to be a universal drink and so on. We might have other proposals though <laughs> than only beer for tonight's restaurant for those who will be joining us. So you have the address, it's very simple for those who come. Uh, it starts at 7.30 tonight and uh, you just take out of the rest, out of the inset, you take uh, the bus 112 to Chateau de Vincennes. You arrive there, you're less than 200 meters away from the restaurant. So uh, ask us if you don't know how to go there the more people will be there, the more beautiful, because we want to celebrate, okay? The, as you could notice with the title of this restaurant, the name of this restaurant, it's called La Méditerranée. So it's about southern food and southern atmosphere. It will be very warm. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit more information about this place. It's a Tunisian restaurant. It's even more than a Tunisian, re Tunisian restaurant. It's a restaurant from Durba the island of Durba, and the owner has been working with me for 20 years in organizing events in Africa, and uh, he knows what sustainability is all about as far as Africa is concerned, and he will probably share with you a number of comments of his story with sport and sustainability in the last 30 years. So that's the first point. The second point is about the pictures which were taken today. Uh, we would like you to tell us if any one of you doesn't want, does not want us to share these photos uh, on the social networks, okay? So if you have a problem with sharing your photos on the networks, you <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's a very important point for, point for us, okay? Because we wish to respect privacy, okay? Uh, Benjamin, do I have anything else to add on this one? Yes, you have, okay, uh, go ahead, and I will. Uh, thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> you know, I have never seen that in my life, you know, I've been involved for more than 30 years in 
congresses and meetings like this, we are always late. And we are ahead of time. That's, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> beautiful. So I would like personally to thank you because we all together did a beautiful job. What we did, we couldn't achieve it without you. So thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you tonight or in the coming weeks by mail. Ciao.